Adam Lerner, BrooklynPhotoWorks.com, and today we are in Lightroom, and I want to share with you guys a quick tip that I like to use that a lot of you guys have asked me about on my YouTube videos. Oftentimes, when I'm using the brush tool, which you can select right over here, or you can hit the letter K on the Mac keyboard, that will take you to the brush tool. You guys have noticed that underneath this, um, the menu here, I have a bunch of presets that go beyond the scope of what comes with Lightroom. And these are very, very easy to create. Oftentimes I will create a brush tool because I might be editing in multiple things that I want to be able to have those settings available. Now, like with any preset, and I've told you this before in other contexts, like with any preset, just because you have a preset does not obligate you or limit you to utilizing the parameters of that preset, meaning that oftentimes I will start with a preset and then I will modify it accordingly depending on the image that I'm um, editing. Okay, so for example, with this portrait right here, um, I would probably want to maybe just reduce a little bit of the lines and maybe some of the darkness under his eyes, okay? Now, he's a young guy. He's got good skin. He doesn't really need a lot of work. And you know, as far as guys go, I don't like to go crazy. I might even want to remove that blemish, but that's separate from the brush tool. Anyway, so what I would do here is I would zoom in. I would go one-to-one, -one, okay? Now, this was shot, just so you guys know. This was shot um, at 1 80th of a second, F3.2, ISO 200 at 70 millimeters uh, with the Canon 5D Mark III and the 24 to 70, and I had a flash in an umbrella, which you can actually see in his eye here as a catch light. Okay, so what I would do here is, let's say I opened up my brush tools. I'm gonna hit the K key, and I could go in here, and I could go down to soften skin. Now that is one of the Lightroom presets. Now watch, now as you can see, watch what happens. If I start softening the skin, okay, I have the overlay on, Okay, I can turn the overlay off by hitting the O key, and you can see that that really kind of mushed up the skin. So watch what happens when I delete that pin, okay, and delete it. And you can see that, that you know, basically what happened is that it, the clarity is at zero, the sharpness is at 25. It just kind of took a little bit out of there for me. So I'm not really too much of a fan of that particular preset as it is for this purpose. So what I would do is, let me show you my technique. So I'm going to double click on effect and that reset the preset, set all the sliders back to zero over there. Now, what I want to do is I want to take my brush tool. All right. I've got the size where I want it because I'm going to be covering a big area. I've got a lot of feathering going on because I want this to blend in really nicely with the other areas of his face. And I've got the flow set to 100 and I've got auto mask. And what auto mask does is that means that it will mask out areas that are of different contrast so that that'll really kind of restrict the brush tool to a certain area, okay? And I have the density on 100, so that means that it's going to basically apply this in its fullest amount where the center or the region of the center circle is, okay? So now, without doing anything here, I'm gonna brush this in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna press the O key, so that shows me the overlay. That's gonna show me the area that I'm affecting. Now, as you guys can see, I'm actually not really doing anything right now. I'm just brushing this in here, and I'm just doing something like that, all right, as you guys can see. And all I'm doing is I'm actually just showing the area that I want to affect. So I haven't even applied any adjustments, okay? So all I'm doing is I'm basically putting an overlay mask on the area that I want to affect. Now, if you can see right in here, I kind of went a little bit too far and I kind of went into this part of his eye. It's not a problem. You can always hit the option key. You know, you can change your brush tool to whatever size you want and then you can erase it. So while you're holding on the option key and you brush along, you can erase areas that you actually don't want to have affected by your brush tool because I don't want to soften the lines and the contours of his eye because I like the eyes to be nice and sharp, okay? And the eyelashes and stuff like that. All right, so we're going to keep it like that. Now, now that we've applied our brush tool, I'm going to turn the overlay key off and I'm going to hit O. And I'm going to now, I'm going to go in and I'm going to reduce the clarity a little bit. And watch what happens. Look, if I knock the clarity all the way down, it makes it look like a mush, okay? That's way too much. I don't want 100% redu reduction in clarity. 
But remember, when we, here's where we started with clarity. You can see that area, as I start to pull it down, it starts to remove a little bit of the clarity. Those mid-tones are, um, that mid-tone highlight detail is, is starting to reduce. Okay, that's very cool. Now, what I also wanna do is I might wanna just reduce the saturation, just a, just a slight touch like that. Okay, and at the same time, I might wanna just pump up the exposure just a little bit, okay? Something in that region right there. And we could also, we could, we could take the sharpness up and make that area sharper, but we don't want to do that. We can bring the sharpness down, but it also desaturates it and it looks, or defocuses it and it looks kind of funny. So maybe we just knock the, sat the sharpness down just, just a hair like that, okay? And watch what happens if I turn the effect on and off. You can see this is what it looked like beforehand. That's what it looked like afterward, okay? That to me is somewhat of an improvement. And if you wanna see it zoomed in and out, you can hit the, the Z key or the space key and you can see the difference between before and after, okay? You see how that is there? Now, let's say I'm gonna be editing a whole series of images of this particular style of portrait and I really wanna make sure that that tool's available because this is how these images are gonna look and I wanna be able to have that tool available to me every time. What I can do here is I can go to Effect and I can go to Save Current Settings as a new preset, okay? And I could just put down here, I could just put like, you know, AL, P, Adam Learner Photography, Soften, I can spell right, eyes, create, boom. Okay, now watch what happens, okay, when I go into my menu here, ALP Soften Eyes is now saved as a new preset, which is awesome. So that means that anytime I want that tool available, I can utilize that preset. I'm not obligated to using that preset, but that preset is available to me. It's just as easy as that. So remember, when you're using the brush tool, you can change the sliders, you can modify current presets, and then you can easily save as a new preset and it'll group it in there with the other presets. So that's a quick tip for Lightroom from brooklynphotoworks.com. Please leave any questions and comments below and we'll see you soon.